Paul, maybe you have a, a, a more uh, sort of uh, articulate way to respond to that. Not articulate, but I would say I have a more simple-minded way, perhaps, which is that for capitalism, the crisis, the depression, is the healing process. The fact that there is a, the fact that you have a stagnant economy, the fact that you have slowing investment, the fact that productivity is not growing, are all, as Jason said earlier, and as he demonstrates in the book, a result of the failure of capitals to invest. There's huge amounts of cash, but it's not profitable to invest it. That's why instead of investing it in production, it's used to make short-term gains in buying art or real estate or um, just having fun. But um, so it, it, at the same time, you couldn't, you can't say you, you, with one, except for one thing, you could not say that capitalism is finished, even though it is now in a period of long-term stagnation and is, you, it's obviously gotten itself in, a, as, in an economic position, which is very serious and very damaging. In theory, if you just looked at it from the point of view of the three volumes of Marx's Capital, in theory, there would be an escape. The escape would mean that the people who run the world would have to really allow to have a full-scale depression like that of the 1930s, but much deeper because now it would involve the whole world. Now it would involve China and India, not just Europe and America. The whole world would have, you would have to have an enormous, you would have to have you know, that enormous unemployment and you would just have to throw people out of the street and let them starve to death in huge numbers. They have been tr avoiding doing this since the middle 1970s when the crisis tendency reasserted itself for the first time after the Second World War. And they're still avoiding it. Every time uh, some, they, the specter of a full bore depression uh, shows itself, they get very busy and print more money and hand it out and keep the thing going for another year or two years or three years or now it's sort of three months at a time because they just they, they really don't know what to do other than print another three trillion dollars and hand it out and to keep the banks open for a while longer. So either, eventually they will try to do this as long as they can. And if they cannot continue or if they miscalculate, then the only, the only alternative would be to really accept a full bore depression. And it is possible that with that level of destruction of capital and that level of destruction of labor, that means killing hundreds of millions of people, it would be possible to reconstitute capitalism, except for one thing, which is at the same time, these idiots have completely destroyed the possibility for life to continue on earth for another hundred years with a global warming. That capitalism having based itself on fossil fuels in the, in the 19th century uh, and the fossil fuel industry now being the largest and most powerful of all capitalist industries. They're the top, they're still the, the top earning industries in the United States. They are not going to just say, oh, that would be so sad if humanity died, because that doesn't really, you know, as Keynes said, in the long run, we're all dead. So maybe their grandchildren will have to have to deal with it. But right now, they're not going to deal with it. So they're not going to have a Green New Deal. They're not going to stop economic growth. They're not going to stop burning fossil fuels. And as a result, the earth is just going to burn up and flood. So it, even apart from the, the tendential fall of the profit rate, People have maybe 50 years to stop capitalism or else you will have the, the same hundreds of millions of people are going to die anyway because the system physically, for the, because of the laws of physics, chemistry, and biology is not going to be able to exist for another hundred years. They have, just, they have now just made it impossible. We're, you know, 20 years from, there being, from the total disappearance of the water supply of India and South America. We're already very close to a, a level, an extremely high level of disaster. So I think that the possibility of saving capitalism by sacrificing the economy, and that means the working class, to uh, reconstitute, reorganize capital, to raise the rate of profit and go on for another in indefinite period. I think it is very dim because in the meantime, they have created such an enormous and totally insoluble problem. Um, in uh, creating this oncoming uh, ecological catastrophe. So no, I actually I think capitalism 
un unfortunately, I, have to, I think it's, on, it's near the end. The end is near, as people like to say. It, it really is. It, 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 this system cannot exist anymore. And you can see they even feel, they don't believe in it themselves anymore. That's why partly what you know Jason was saying that the whole they people have lost interest in culture or art and nobody wants to go to the stupid opera anymore. Or they don't even want to go to the movies. They just want to stay home and watch Superman reruns on Hulu. You know, the whole the people are just don't know what to do. There is other than to, I don't know buy a new pair of jeans, have fun, and go to a fancy restaurant. And now you can't even do that. Now, they, now they've even made it impossible to have this, the stupidest of all consumer pleasures. So I think we're in a very serious and difficult moment, and a unique moment in human history because of this very specific dynamic of capitalism and the fatal choice that was made to base the whole economic system on the exploitation of fossil fuels 150 years ago. And now they now this has to be dealt with. People will have to put an end to it or they will just we will just go out of existence.